Hi! So in my last video I had a hard drive I connected up and as I was trying to do that these wires were kind of flimsy my power supplies aren't great so they don't have the right connectors to push these through the and then tighten down the connector they're just really made for like a spade terminal or something like that they aren't made to have a just a direct wire so uh, figured I'd do a little video making a little project um, I got a bunch of these banana connectors which will fit inside the power supply and your multimeter and lots of other things. So I figured I'd uh, attach some of them to this connector so I can do uh, testing on computer hardware a little easier. Um, and yeah, so we'll make a couple of these and I'm going to make a couple of uh, just regular cables as well. Uh, since I'm, if I'm getting everything ready, I might as well do that. So I have uh, a couple spools of hookup wire. This is just 16 gauge wire. Uh, you know, it's decent quality, good enough. Uh, it's not like really high voltage rated wire, um, but for for a simple low voltage connector like this, it's it's perfectly suitable. Um, and 16 gauge is plenty to, to carry current. These are going to be, you know, just little six inch cables. Um, but yeah, you know, so I make you know a lot of these little short connectors like this, which is made with the same 16 gauge wire, and these. You measure in the on the order of a couple milli ohms, so you basically don't have any loss between here. And these are uh, these are soldered as well, so you get a nice solid connection. You don't have to worry about it falling apart. Of course, these boots are always fun. <laughs> that one wasn't so bad. So yeah, I make these connectors all the time just to make things easier rather than having a three foot cable and then the wire is made out of who knows what and it's, you know, really skinny, tiny wire just uh, doesn't usually can't take the current. So these end up being a lot better quality and a lot easier to work with. So um, yeah, so let's get to it. I need to cut this down to a length and strip some sections and uh, yeah, let's make some wires. All right, got some wire cutters, strippers. Let's just cut some short pieces. I'm just gonna do that. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make. Four short wires. These are 16 gauge, slide them in there. Strip the ends. So next we're gonna go over to the soldering bench. We'll see what that looks like. It's a total mess. So that'll probably be some sped up footage because it's gonna take a little while wire to get all. It's going to take a little while to get all these wires all uh, prepped and everything. All right, so we got all our cables made up here. And we got our bin of connectors. So one thing we need to do with these connectors is make sure we get the part that we need. So they come with the, you see there's a screw there. The screw is really just to hold the connector in, so we got to remove that. And this will pop out. And so you see you got uh, that little thread there, which will help hold the wire a little bit, but it's really not for that. It's really just to hold this in the insulator piece. Really, that's a solder cup in there. So the wire should get soldered in uh, for the best possible connection. So yeah, we got to separate out. Looks like we have four ends there and eight here. So we need 12 of these. And how many do I have? Maybe I don't have enough. 10, 11, and 12. Just enough. So, all right, I'm gonna take all the screws out of these, bring them over to the bench, and let's do some soldering. All right, you're gonna have to excuse the noise in this part of the video. I have a fan here that's just gonna extract some of the fumes while we're doing our soldering. I uh, got a little solder dispenser roll here. One of the things I always do is I just grab the side of the box from the solder and just stuff it in here so that way I know which one's which. Um, and so we got all our wires here. We're going to go ahead and make sure they look clean. And we're going to go ahead and tin all of these wires. 
So we got our helping hands. We can go ahead and shove a bunch of wires in there so that they're uh, available to be able to to tin the leads on those. So we got our solder, got our iron, make sure our tip's wet. Make sure that looks good. Get some, uh, get some heat on these wires and go ahead and apply some solder to them. Okay, we're back at the bench and now we got to put all these together. So the first one, we have our uh, ketchup and mustard cables for our computer drive. So we have a screw hole and then a hole for another probe to go through to so line those up. We got to install all four of these. That's not on shot. So we got our connector on there. Get these screws tightened down. And we got two on there. Okay, there it is, one cable done. Uh, so now we uh, can plug this into our power supply easily and get a good connection every time. Now this end over here is still uh, not so great, but uh, at least the other end is gonna be a nice reliable connection. Now I gotta finish up the rest of these cables and then we'll uh, do a couple tests on them. All right, and just like that, we got uh, all of our cables made. Uh, so we have all of our nice short leads and our uh, computer cable set and our uh, couple of other test leads. And then I have a little setup going here. So we have our uh, positive lead coming out. It's going through a current uh, sensor, which is to measure DC. I had set for DC, I have zeroed. So it's using 0.01 amp right now, it's zeroed out. That's going through, 
connecting to a power resistor. This is uh, just an 8 ohm resistor. Um, and then that's going uh, over here. We have an alligator clip just holding this on to this other lead of the resistor. And this is one of the cables we just made here. And we're measuring the resistance um, here and over here. And actually, we should swap these out. So this is here. And that's there. So now we're measuring the voltage across this cable. So we're going to measure how much loss there is across that cable. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to actually um, figure out how much um, resistance there is in the cable just by using Ohm's law. So if we can turn the voltage up on our power supply. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it up all the way. And now I have the current limit set. So should be getting to around three amps doesn't have the finest adjustment but at least we get close so we can see our voltage drop on our cables about 26.7 millivolts uh, for this particular cable so uh, right now we're putting about uh, you can see three times in, uh, the voltage uh, across uh, the power supply is about 25 volts right now, so about 75 watts overall going into this power resistor. This is going to get pretty hot really quick. It's already getting pretty hot. Um, all right, let's uh, turn this voltage back down. Go ahead and swap out to the next cable. Let's see what we get. See with this one, we're measuring about 12.3 uh, millivolts. So this one's actually quite a bit better. Uh, these are still using alligator clips just to hold on here. So I, I'm sure if I mess around with this connection, I can get it to change a little bit. All right, let's go to the next one. on this one so turn that down test out the last one so there we got about 13 so I kind of want to go back and test that first cable again and see uh, if there's something wrong with this one. I think it was this one. I turn that back down. get about 20 millivolts hmm so this cable is slightly inferior to the others so it's probably got not quite as good of a solder joint inside um, I'm good just saying that all the cables are about 20 millivolts so I'm gonna go with 20 for math all right it's uh, whiteboard time again so Using the values we just measured, we had about 20 millivolts here. We had about 3 amps through our ammeter, so we have an equation which is uh, Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. So we need to figure out what R is. So R, and we rearrange that, we get V over I, and then we just plug in our numbers, and we get 7 milliohms. So 0 0.007 ohms is the worst case resistance of one of these test leads. The other ones were actually um, almost half the millivolts, so they're actually like 3 milliohms which is awesome so 
uh, just as an example in this circuit that resistor was dissipating about 75 watts of power P is uh, current times voltage so 0 0.02 volts times 3 amps is 0 0.06 watts so this thing is negligible in terms of the amount of power getting into that 8 ohm resistor um, which is exactly what I want. I want to make sure all the power is getting to the circuit and we're having minimal loss across that cable. So we're going to do our test a little bit again. And this time I brought in a couple other test leads. We're just going to try out some of these uh, off the shelf leads. So I have one of the typical alligator clip type leads. Uh, this one is a little bit uh, heavier duty than some of the real cheapies. And uh, let's just see what we get with this one. So this has its own thing there, so we're going to do that, and then I'm actually going to clip onto there. That's my multimeter trying to turn off. Make sure that stays on. Make sure we can read our current meter. Thing wants to flip over on us. Um, yeah, it's not going to want to stay on there very good, but that's all right. Just hook that in there. So we're going to hook that on there. Hook this here, so no currents flowing through there. Make sure we can get that meter on there. All right, so we still have our 0 0.01 amps. Let's go ahead and take this up to, to 3 amps. So already we can see we have 177.7 millivolts of drop on that cable. Oh, that's my other meter now. It's trying to tell me it's time to turn it off. So now we're talking about 177. We'll just say 178 millivolts on the alligator clip. And these are a little bit longer leads too, so you'd expect it to be a little bit higher, but that's that's pretty substantial. We'll go through and do the numbers on that one and see how that one turns out. Let's turn this off. So that's three amps through this wire. And now let's try out this one. So this one does have the banana plug on one end. So we can get that same type connection. Make sure we get a very good connection there. And then same thing over here. Let's turn it up. And oh, now our current meter turned off. To turn that off, we gotta turn that back down. Turn this back on. Need 20 amp range. Turn it back to DC, have to zero it, and turn it back up. All right, so we're back to our three amps. Now we have 217 millivolts. So 218 is actually rising, so it's heating up right now. Uh, we'll go 218 millivolts, close enough. So this was the, this is the, banana, red, black. Okay, so we have our, our different connections there. You can see 178 and 218 millivolts. So let's go ahead and do the, the calculations for these. So we still, still had three amps running through our circuit for both of those cases. We'll get our calculator out. So our uh, formula over here, the three stays the same, but now we have a much higher voltage. So we have Okay, so we have our voltage values here. So now we need to calculate our resistances. So we have a, we can use the same formula from over four over here, the R equals V over I, and we have 178 millivolts. We'll bring in our calculator. So we have 0 0.178 divided by three. So that's going to give us about 59 milliohms. 0 0.059 ohms. And now we'll do that again for the other one. So we have 0.218, divide that by three. So now we have 700, or 73 rather, uh, milliohms. 0 0.073 ohms. So we can go ahead and calculate our power losses too. So 0.178 times three. So that's the 0.534 watts in that cable. We have 0.218 times 3, 0.654. So 
quite a bit more loss in these cables. So now you can see the 0 0.06 watts of loss we have in this cable is, you know, negligible. We don't really have to worry about it. But when we have a half a watt of loss, you know, 0.5 and 75, you know, we're losing half a percent in that cable. We're losing almost 1% in this cable. So in terms of efficiency in a system, just by having a, a longer wire or an inferior connection, you lose quite a bit of power uh, just to the wire itself because the wire itself acts like a resistor. So all right, that's about it. So this is a really quick build doing some uh, custom cables and uh, just to get some better better leads for for doing some different experiments and and projects thanks for watching like and subscribe